and Merry Christmas in July to everybody out there. I'm Brenda KB Anderson, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this adorable Christmas stocking. It's called the Cable Christmas Stocking. Pretty self-explanatory, right? We're going to be doing some crocheted cables here and a little bit of ribbing, and then at the end I'm going to teach you guys how I wrote this name on here. So that's actually the simplest part of this whole stocking. So stay tuned for that. Um, of course, this is a live event, so if you guys have any questions, if you have any comments or suggestions, anything like that, just drop them in the chat box. I love hearing from you guys. I love knowing you're out there and hearing where you're crocheting from or what you're working on. Um, so please definitely do that. Um, and I also, <coughs> um, well, let's just, let's just start by talking about what materials we're going to uh, need for this project. So this is pretty straightforward. Um, We'll need a couple of balls of wool yarn. Let's see, I'll give you the yardages here. Um, about 240 yards of the main color, so that would be the red color in this stocking. And we need about, let's see, 100 yards, or probably even a little bit less of the contrasting color, so that would be the white here. And in the instructions, which is a free download, so please download that and you can follow along now. You can also just download this later if you don't feel like you want to do it right now. That's completely fine. Um, but in the download, I also mention that it's preferably a wool that is not a super wash. And the reason for that is only because of the way that we're going to put the name on here. So there are other options for how you can apply the name. You could, instead of using my method here, which relies on being able to felt uh, the yarn that we're working with. Um, instead of that, you could do, you know, chain stitch embroidery or something else. Um, you can also make a small chain of stitches and then sew that on. I've done that before, like, um, you know, like a long cursive, like a chain that you can do to kind of write something out in cursive or just shorter chains and you can sew them on. That's a nice, easy way to make things look nice and tidy if you're not used to embroidering on a bumpy fabric like this, because that can be a little bit tricky. Um, but if you want to use my method of um, applying the, the yarn on here, you're going to need a yarn that is able to felt. So that would be a wool yarn or alpaca or some kind of animal fiber that is not super washed. So if it says washable on the label, don't, that's not going to work. <laughs> it has to be like hand wash only situation, otherwise it's not going to felt. Another thing I would mention um, is to beware of buying a wool that's like if you're going to buy white for this contrasting color, make sure it's not too white unless you test it first because uh, sometimes during the chemical process of whatever they need to do to whiten the wool, some of the um, scales on the wool are changed and so they don't felt as well. Even though it's not made to be a superwash, it kind of acts a little bit like that. It doesn't felt as much as um, just like a natural wool color. So the color that I suggested in the pattern will work because I have used that. Um, but I would just, if you're using a different brand or some other kind of wool, um, just be careful with the lighter colors with, with a white um, and do a little test first just to make sure that's actually going to felt before you crochet it all up. All right, so um, you're gonna need those two colors of yarn and a crochet hook, of course. I am using a G hook, which is a four millimeter hook, um, but you will use whatever hook you need to in order to get the gauge that you need to um, to have your stocking turn out like my stocking. Um, and you know, having said that, it doesn't really matter if your stocking's a little bigger, a little smaller, you might even wanna change that on purpose. Um, but you know, my gauge will give you an idea about how, how large your stocking will end up being. If your gauge swatch is a little bit bigger than mine, your stocking will be a little bit bigger than mine if you follow my directions. Um, it also gives you an idea of how stiff your fabric will be. So for this stocking, I wanted to make sure it could stand up to a lot of stuffing, lots of heavy stuff being put in here. Not that you're going to be giving anybody bricks or anything, I hope. Um, but you know, I just didn't want uh, the stocking to look kind of like it had holes in it and was all stretched out. So I want to make sure we crocheted it at a tight enough gauge that it could kind of stand up to whatever fun fillings you're going to put into your Christmas stockings. So, um, so the gauge will also help you know that it, you know, if you're getting something similar to mine, it should hold up to whatever you put in there. All right. So the other thing you're going to need are some stitch markers. These are locking stitch markers that are removable and you can you know use these to keep your place in the project that's just all that they're for so that you um, don't have to count as much and you don't get quite as confused about where you're at when you have to go you know make dinner and come back later <laughs> so you know where you're at um, let's see and the last thing I wanted to mention you will need if you're going to be putting the name on like how I did you're going to be needing a felting tool 
So this is called a felting pen. And what it is, is it's just like a little plastic and it has these little barbed needles in there. So they have like these little jaggedy sides to them. And when you push this into your, your fabric, which is made out of a feltable thing, it tangles up the pieces of wool <clears throat> with whatever you're felting it on top of and it kind of locks it in place. I have used this before in a couple of other projects um, and I have gotten questions from people like, questions like, does that actually stay on or is it just kind of sitting on the surface? It actually does stay on if it felts. It, it's, it becomes like part of the, the project. You know, you can't just pick it off with your fingernail if you've felted it long enough. If you just felt it just ever so slightly, you, you'll probably be able to pick at it and kind of pull some of it off. Um, but if you are actually felting it, you know, fairly, fairly thoroughly, then it, it will stay there. And I have gotten other questions in some of my other projects. And what about washing? Well, this is, this is a hand washable only project because of the felting of the wool. You wouldn't be able to throw it in the washing machine, but you can certainly get it wet. <clears throat> it won't come off if you get it wet. You can, you know, that's not the problem. It's more just like, you can't just put it in the washing machine because then your whole stocking will shrink and felt and it'll be sad. <laughs> so don't do that. Um, but to everybody out there who is thinking, oh my goodness, I was really hoping this would be like a worsted weight acrylic project. I have so much of that at, at my house. Um, believe me, I understand because I also have a lot of that in my house. Um, you can certainly substitute with that if you want to, but you're just going to have to apply the name or, or whatever writing you want to do on your stocking in a different way. So that's fine. All right. So those are your materials. Um, and let's see. I think that was all I needed to say before I start. So we're going to start by working on the ribbed cuff. So this is made in two separate pieces. So first we make this ribbed cuff and you can use that to check your gauge. So you can see when I unfold it, um, it has been stitched onto the top of the stocking. So we're making this separate and separate from the sock and then we're going to sew them together. So we're going to begin by just making this ribbed rectangle. And I am going to start out, I know this is a different color, so I hope that's not confusing, but I'm just using this color because I thought it would show up a little bit better for you guys. I didn't want to use white on the white table. Um, so I have already chained 31, uh, 31 chains here. This is to begin the, the ribbed section. And we are going to begin by working into the bottom of our chain, which is the edge of the chain where all these little horizontal dashes are. So normally when you're taught how to crochet, normally people teach you to slide your hook underneath that V, underneath both loops, or sometimes under just that back loop of the V. Um, but I have found when I crochet things, I really like to just work into the bottom of the chain because it leaves these two, the little V open on the other side. It makes it look neat and tidy and it's just easier for me to get my hook underneath that one strand. Um, but if you are like, yeah, that's, that's not for me. I just want to do it my own way. That's fine. It'll just be a little bit different when you get to the end um, and because I have you crocheting the you're going to crochet this rectangle into a tube later on to attach it, but you can definitely just fasten off and whip stitch it, whip stitch your ends together. So you don't need to worry if you're like, yeah, I, is this going to ruin my project if I work into the wrong part of the chain? No, you can do it how you like to do it. That's completely fine. All right, so we're going to start with the second chain from the hook. So we're going to skip this little horizontal dash here. We're going to work into this chain and we're going to start by working a half double crochet. So that is made with a yarn over and we're going to insert our hook underneath that second chain from uh, the bottom of the second chain from the hook. And we're going to yarn over, pull up a loop. Now we have three loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through three. And if you're newer to crocheting, I highly recommend placing a stitch marker in that first stitch that you just made because the end stitches, that's always where we drop or add extra stitches that don't belong there. And the edges of your your ribbing are going to show. Well, at least one edge is going to show because it's folded down. Here's the edge of your ribbing right there. So we want to make that nice and neat and tidy. So we're going to mark that just so that we don't get confused. And we are going to work half double crochets all the way across into each one of those bumps from your chain. So we yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through three. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop yarn over, pull through three, just like that, all the way across. 
And I want to say hi and welcome to Elaine, who's saying this is exciting. Yay! <laughs> I want to know if anybody out there has already started on their Christmas list, because I have not. <laughs> That's my confession. I made the stocking, and it wasn't even something that was on my list, um, so that wasn't really helping, but I am kind of a known procrastinator. So th these kinds of things in the middle of the summer, it's a good reminder for me, like, oh, yeah, you know, you shouldn't wait till the very last minute because crochet can take a lot of time. So it's good to get a little jump start. All right, so imagine that I just worked half double crochets all the way across to the very end. Okay, so that's what you're supposed to do. Then when you get to the end, you will chain two and turn your work. And when I chain those two, I chain them kind of tightly. Or instead of that, you, you might find that just chaining one there is sufficient for you. And then you're gonna turn your work and whatever you chained, whether it was one or two, those do not count as a stitch. So that means you're not working into those chains. You're going to start by working into this stitch right here. And you're going to work into only the back loop of it. So that's how we're going to create our ribbing. So the back loop is right here. Okay, we're going to work underneath that instead of underneath both loops. We're just going to slide our hook right through there. So we're going to work half double crochets through the back loop only. So yarn over, insert through the back loop. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over through three. So you're just going to continue doing that all the way across, only working underneath that back loop. And so that is what creates the ribbing. It makes those ridged edges. It makes your fabric extra stretchy. It's just a nice little, you know, it's kind of surprising how big of a difference things, you know, when you, when you put your hook in just a slightly different place in the stitch, I mean, we're just missing one loop, how different the characteristics of the fabric can be. It is it is surprising. <laughs> all right, so you'll just work all the way across, working through that back loop. And when you get to the end, again, you'll just chain two, turn your work, and work back and forth and back and forth, just in this half double crochet through the back loop only stitch pattern. And you will end up with a piece that looks like this. OK, so we've worked, um, let's see, 34 rows total here and we've ended over here, and then you can just place a stitch marker in it and set it aside for later. But before you get this far, you can take a section of your, your, um, the piece that you've been crocheting, and then you can check your gauge using that, so find out how many stitches um, per four inches and how many rows per four inches and compare it to what I have in the pattern. So that way you'll know if your stocking is gonna turn out the size that you're expecting it to, this is a similar size to mine at least. All right. Um, the next part is working on the stocking part itself, the stocking, um, the sock part. And we are going to begin that with a, a foundation chain of 49, 49 chains. And then we are going to begin again. We're going to start working into the bottom of the chain because that's most, almost always my preferred method there for whatever I'm doing. I'm going to skip that first chain. And this time, instead of working a half double crochet, we're going to work a stitch called the extended single crochet. So if that's new for you, um, this is exciting because the extended single crochet is one of my favorite stitches of all time. It's smooth and stretchy, it's super easy to do. It's not complicated at all. And it just, like I was saying before, it's just surprising how much you can change a little tiny bit of a stitch and have the characteristics of the fabric be so different. All right, so we're skipping that first horizontal dash and we're going to work under the second one. We're going to insert our hook there. We're going to yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through only one loop, and then yarn over and pull through two loops. All right, I'm going to mark that stitch just because that's the first stitch of our row here. This is um, called the setup row. Let me move on to the next page here. <clears throat> we are going to be working this in the round, but I call this a setup row because I just work one row and then I join in the round. All right, you can, I mean, you don't have to do it that way. It just makes it a little easier to sew things together later. Um, it's really kind of a matter of preference. You can just make your chain and begin working in the round. If you'd rather just do a round of extended single crochet first and move on, that's fine too. So um, we're going to be working extended single crochet all the way across this chain. So again, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through just one loop, and then we're going to yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, so this is very similar to a regular single crochet, except we have this extra little step where we only, instead of pulling through two stitches, we just pull through one, 
and then we yarn over and pull through two. So you have that extra little bit of height that is created by that one chain, and then you do basically what's a single crochet on top of it. So you'll just continue working all the way across each of those stitches. And because we skipped the one that was closest to the hook, that's just gonna be a turning chain, it doesn't ever count as anything, you're gonna end up with 48 extended single crochets all the way across. So that will look like this. There we go. And see it's kind of stretchy and boingy. <clears throat> that's one of the characteristics of the extended single crochet that I love so much. All right, so I am just gonna remove this stitch marker here. That, that wasn't the beginning of the row, how I had, here, I'll mark that again, like on, I did in my sample that I just crocheted up for you guys. Um, I had marked the very first stitch of the row, ta-da, like that. And then here we are in the very last stitch of the row. Then when we're done with that setup row, we're going to just bring the ends together in a circular shape like this, okay, so we're just butting them up. You want to make sure it's not twisting or anything funny. And then you can remove that stitch marker and then we're going to start working in the round. So this would be round one. We're going to make an extended single crochet into the very first stitch of the round. So same thing, we insert our hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. So you may have noticed I didn't even slip stitch to join those together. I just started with a stitch right in that first extended single crochet. You don't need to slip stitch it there. Um, you can if you want to, but you don't necessarily have to do that. If you do slip stitch, you'll have to chain one um, for your beginning chain to kind of get your hook up to the right height. So I was just keeping it simple and just beginning with a stitch right in that first stitch. All right, the second stitch we're going to do in round one is a front post double crochet. So we yarn over and then we're going to work around the next stitch. So now a lot of times people get confused when you're going back and forth between post stitches and not post stitches. It gets very confusing for people um, about where to put, where which stitch to actually work into because it, um, sometimes it feels like you're working really far away from where you just were and it feels like you're skipping a stitch but you're not. So here is the extended single crochet we just made and we made it into this extended single crochet right here. We made it into the top of that stitch. So we've already worked, you know, the stitch that, that belongs to this post right here. We're looking at the front post here. So we're going to work around the following stitch, which is over here. And it seems like there's a very large gap, almost like we're skipping a stitch, but that's because when you're working in the round, the top of the stitch is always just a little to the right of the post of the stitch. Um, if you're a right-handed crocheter, the opposite is true if you're left-handed. So if you're a left-handed crocheter, the top of your stitch will be just ever so slightly to the left of the post that belongs with it, okay? So this is the post that we're gonna be working around. We're gonna insert our hook here right before the post around the back and it's going to pop out right after that post okay so we're going to yarn over and insert yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two so this is similar to a regular double crochet except that we're working around the post instead of in the top of the stitch and then the following stitch is an extended single crochet so we've already worked this stitch the top of the stitch is over here. The next stitch is right here. So we're going to do an extended single crochet right there. There's our extended single crochet. And then we are going to work two more front post double crochets. So we'll yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and make another one. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So there's two front posts right next to each other. The next stitch is an extended single crochet. So here's our extended single crochet in the top. Then we're gonna do two more front post double crochets. One and two. Okay, so now we have just completed what we're gonna repeat all the way around. So it goes extended, front post, extended then front post, front post, extended, front post, front post. And if that seems like, oh my gosh, I will never remember that. That is okay because just this first round is the round where you really have to pay attention. And once you set up where all the post stitches go and where all the extended single crochets go, it's gonna be really easy to tell what kind of stitch you're supposed to be doing. So you don't need to worry if you're like, oh, that's, I can't remember all that. Plus, of course, you have the instructions. You know, you can download the instructions and read along um, and just be careful when you're working that first round. Plus. 
If you guys know me, you know how much I love charts and I love working from charts. If you're a chart person, I've charted this out for you. What this is showing is only half of your stocking. So it, what it's showing here, let me just put this here. It's showing these three repeats and then you would repeat, you'd go back to the beginning and repeat this whole section again for the other side of the stocking. So you're gonna have a total of six cables around your sock. Um, <clears throat> this is just showing half of it because I wanted it to be nice and big. <laughs> So I could see. All right, so now we're gonna repeat what we already did. All right, so extended single crochet, front post, extended single crochet, and then we're gonna do front, oh wait, we're down here in this row, sorry, I got confused. Extended single crochet, front post, extended single crochet, two, ex um, two front posts, extended single crochet, two front posts, okay? So this is the repeat right there. And um, you probably noticed this, but there's a little key at the bottom so you can decipher what all these symbols are. If you're newer to charts, um, it'll tell you what those symbols all stand for. Okay, so here we are working on um, round number one, which is in blue. And we're just going to repeat that around. So extended single crochet, front post. And when I say front post, I mean front post double crochet in this round. Extended single crochet, two front post double crochets, one and two, extended single crochet, two more front post double crochets, one and two. All right, that's the second repeat and we're going to do that um, four more times. So extended single crochet, front post double crochet, extended single crochet, two front post double crochets, one and two, and an extended single crochet, and two more front post double crochets, one and two. So for me, when I'm working this very first row where we're starting to do the post stitches, I think in numbers on this one, so I think there's one of these, one of these, one of these. So I think one, 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 and then two, one, two. So one, 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 two, one, two is what I say to myself. So every time I say a new number, that's when I switch. Obviously you don't have to do it this way, but this is just what helps me um, to remember when to switch. So I did the first one and the second one. Here's the third one. And now we're doing two, which is the front post double crochets, one and two. And then extended single crochet, and then two front post double crochets, one and two. All right, we're halfway around, and we're going to repeat that whole thing again. So extended single crochet, front post double crochet, extended single crochet, two front post stitches, one and two. and extended single crochet, and two more front post double crochets. One and two. All right. I think we only have one more repeat left, I guess. We must have already done five, so we'll, we'll keep going here. So we've got extended single crochet, front post double crochet, extended single crochet, two front post double crochets, one, and two, extended single crochet, and then two more front post double crochets, one, and the last, um, the second of those front post double crochets, it is right next to the split here. The split is going to get stitched up later, by the way, if you're kind of worrying about that, don't worry about it. We're going to just use this yarn tail to sew it shut later. But just know it is kind of open and weird there, but you can still see the post. It's between my thumbnails here, and that's where we're going to work around. So we're going to yarn over and just put, place your hook around that post, just like you have been. Don't, don't worry that there's nothing right next to it. And there's your last front post double crochet of the round. So now the hardest part has been done because just concentrating on that and getting all the posts and extended single crochets in the right place, um, that is definitely the hardest part here. <laughs> all right, and you know, it's worth taking your time to make sure that you really have all the right stitches there. Um, 
most likely if you come all the way around to the end and everything worked out you know as with the amount of stitches you're probably fine but it doesn't hurt to just kind of go around and just double check everything real quick all right so the next round is going to be where we start crossing over our cables so we're going to start here we're going to work extended single crochet into an extended single crochet front post double crochet into a front post double crochet extended single crochet into an extended single crochet so in this pattern you're always going to be working like stitches into like stitches the only time that it's going to be a little different is when you get to these cable crossing rows and all or the cable crossing sections and i'll tell you that but you're still working post stitches into post stitches all right so um, always post stitches into post stitches and extended single crochets into extended single crochets all right, so you can see <coughs> here's our extended single crochet from round one. We're going to make an extended single crochet into that stitch. The next stitch is a front post double crochet. The next uh, stitch is an extended single crochet. And now we have gotten to this part where we're going to be crossing over our stitches. So the stitches that cross over each other are a little taller because they have to reach further. So these are front post treble crochets. And you can see this stitch is connected way over here to this stitch and the same thing with the next stitch all right so we're going to be reaching further we're, we're basically just making our stitches out of order so we're going to yarn over twice <coughs> we're going to skip these first two post stitches which are right there we're going to skip this extended single crochet and we're going to work around the following post stitch all right so we've got we've yarned over twice we're going to insert around that post just like we have been doing yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two for a front post treble crochet so you can see it has to reach way over to connect with that post all right so the next stitch is going to be in the post right next to it so we'll yarn over twice insert around that post yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two all right, so now we are gonna go back and catch some of those stitches that we already made. The first one we're gonna work on is an ex the extended single crochet, but we're gonna work behind the stitches we just made. So what that means is you just pull those stitches forward towards yourself, and we're gonna, we're, I'm gonna move them back here just so you can see. Um, here's the extended single crochet we're gonna be working into. So as I pull these forward, this is the stitch that we're working into. If you're having trouble figuring out which stitch is which here, when you pull these forward, you can see that they are connected to these, the tops of these stitches. So this post went around this stitch, this post went around that stitch. So those have been worked. And as we're working backward, we're gonna look for the next one, the last stitch basically that we skipped before we started working around the post. So it's right here. It's just the next door neighbor to that first, um, front post treble crochet, um, the placement of the front, front post treble crochet rather. So right there is where we're gonna work, okay? So, and you have to do that with these stitches kind of bent over toward you, so that way, and when you, when you insert your hook, you wanna make sure your yarn is on the right side, or if you're a left-handed crocheter, it'll be on the left side, because if you're crocheting this as a left-handed crocheter, um, I would highly recommend watching me in a mirror or watching a flipped, you know, if you can flip your screen from side to side, flip it. Um, so it looks like the reverse of what I'm doing. Um, like if, if you were watching me in a mirror, that would be awesome because the, uh, it'll look like I'm a left-handed crocheter then. Okay, so you're gonna insert your hook right into that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. We're just placing that extended single crochet right there. Okay, and now we are going to go back in front of those stitches that we just made, in front of the post stitches even, and we're going to work these two post stitches that we skipped before. So we're going to yarn over twice, because we're doing a front post treble, so that always starts out with two yarn overs, and we're going to work in the first one we skipped first. Okay, so we're going to insert our hook from right to left, or if you're a left-handed crochet, from left to right. Yarn over, bring up your loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And I know this looks a little bit messy, but on the next round, it's gonna start to look a little bit more clean. The stitches will kind of pull things into place. All right, so now we have to go get that second post stitch that we skipped, which is right here. So we're gonna yarn over twice, insert your hook from right to left, or from left to right if you're a lefty. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. All right, so now what we have are the last two stitches we just made are sitting on top of the first two post stitches, and in the back is that extended single crochet right in the middle. So if you look at the top, 
this is a post stitch, this is a post stitch, this is an extended single crochet, post stitch, post stitch. All right, so you still have post stitches in the same placement, extended single crochet right in the middle of those two groups of two. All right, just that's important to know for the next round. Makes it a little bit easier. All right, so the next stitch is an extended single crochet, which is right here. It's kind of like a little indentation. Then we have a ridge, that, so that is telling you to do a front post double crochet. So in this pattern, you're always going to do double crochets if you're not crossing over your post stitches. If your post stitches are supposed to cross, you're going to do a front post treble crochet, OK? And the next stitch is an extended single crochet right there. All right, and this will become a little bit more pronounced as you start working on it, and you're really going to see that ridge and these two kind of like indentations or crevices next to that ridge. Those will always be the same. If you look at the chart all the way up, it's always post stitches right here, always extended single crochets here and here. That's the same in between each cable. Okay, so that's going to be like a constant every time. All right, so now we're at our next repeat of the cables that cross. So we're going to yarn over twice, skipping the first two posts, skipping the extended single crochet, and we're going to work a front post treble crochet into the next front post double crochet, and make another front post treble crochet into the next post stitch there. One, two, and three. Now remember, we're going to work behind our work, and we're going to place an extended single crochet in the stitch before those two stitches we just worked around. So we're going to make that extended single crochet back there, and then we're going to yarn over twice, and we're going to make post stitches around these two stitches that we've already skipped. Okay, so we're just going back to get those one at a time, starting with that first skip stitch and ending with that second skipped stitch there. Those are front post treble crochets because they cross over. So you can start to see the pattern emerging here. I'm just going to continue working this around. We've already learned um, almost all the skills you need to make this sock already. I know it's so tiny, but this, this was the trickiest part is um, kind of getting situated with starting up all of your cables and then beginning, like understanding how to cross your cables over, especially if you're newer and you've never made crochet cables before. It can be a little bit confusing at first. Um, but if anybody has any questions about them, please let me know. And I can try and help you out a little bit while we're here today, so. All right. So there is the next repeat of that, those cables that cross over each other. And there's an extended single crochet, front post double crochet, extended single crochet in between our um, twisting cable sections. And now we're going to do another cable twist here, skipping over those first three stitches of that, um, that section, the first two posts and the extended single crochet. And we're working front post trebles into the next two posts. Now we're going to go back and get that extended single crochet from behind there. Even though we're working behind, we're still inserting our hook from front to back through our fabric, though. All right, now we're going to go back and in front of our work, and we're going to make a post stitch around each of those two posts that we skipped. One and two. And so it might seem like, you know, your hook is over here and your next stitch is over here. What? That seems so far away. But these stitches really have to be brought over here to, to really cross over. You just have to kind of trust in it <laughs> at first when you're making cables. It might seem like some of the things you're going to be doing might seem a little crazy, but you just have to trust in it. And, and then you start to see the cables form. And when you're working on, you know, the first couple rounds of your cable pattern, it is really kind of tricky to see what the pattern is. It becomes much, much more clear as you get more rows in. It just, I don't know, it's something about having that many more repeats makes your eye understand what's happening a little bit better, and it looks a little less, much less confusing, actually. All right, I'm still just continuing those same, you know, stitch sequence of the extended single crochet, front post double crochet, extended single crochet, and then we're doing that cabling twist uh, where we're crossing over front post treble crochets over each other with the extended single crochet right in the middle there. And I think we have one more repeat. Yep, one more repeat of this round here. There we are. Here's our last cable crossing. 
making that extended single crochet behind here. And then two more front post treble crochets in the, the stitches that we skipped here. One and two. All right. So we've made it to the end of round uh, two, which was the cable crossing round here. And then the next three rounds are all the same, exactly the same as each other. So, and it's actually the same as round one, only this time it's easier because you already have posts set up so you know where to put your posts and where to put your extended single crochets. So we're gonna start out with an extended single crochet in the first stitch, and then a front post double crochet around the next stitch, and then an extended single crochet in the third stitch. And now we've come to where we had crossed over our cables and it looks like kind of a mess here, right? But what you need to do on that very first round after your cables cross is you need to take time and figure out where all the stitches are uh, along the top edge. So that might mean you kind of have to pull them apart a little and really examine this, especially if you are new to this. It may be confusing because they're all kind of pulled together and some are behind others and it, it, it's just a little harder to look at. Um, so you do have to take a little bit of time, make sure you're stitching into the right place. So the next stitch is a front post double crochet because we're not crossing over our, our post stitches, we're just going straight up. So we're gonna yarn over once and then insert around the next post, which is right here. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Another front post double crochet into this next post stitch, which is right here. And then the third stitch, of course, is an extended single crochet. It's gonna be in back here. That's the one we did behind. So there's our extended single crochet. And then two more front post double crochets. So no matter what, we're always, whether we're crossing our stitches or whether we're not, there is always that extended single crochet that goes straight up the middle of those cable crossings. Okay, so it's right there. It, we're always doing extended single crochets into the extended single crochet from the previous round. All right, now we're gonna start that sequence again. So we have an extended single crochet, front post double crochet, extended single crochet, and now we've gotten to a cable crossing round, so you gotta kinda dig around in there and find your stitches. We're gonna do front post double crochet, front post double crochet, extended single crochet back here, front post double crochet, front post double crochet. So you can see now that uh, you know, after we've worked a little bit, you can actually start to see these ridges and now on the next round, because you're just repeating what you already did, you're gonna be able to see these stitches as they come up. You can see there's a ridge here. That's a front post double crochet ridge. Here's an extended single crochet ridge right here. So you work an extended single crochet into that stitch. There's a post stitch, there's a post stitch, there's the extended single crochet that's kind of going in the middle of that cable and two more post stitches, okay? So you're just gonna keep repeating what we're just working on now for two more rounds. So there's a total of three rounds right here, one, two, three, that you're doing exactly the same thing. You're just working front post double crochets into the post stitches and extended single crochets into the extended single crochets. That's all that is really. And then you're gonna start repeating again. So after you've worked three stitches, or three rounds, sorry, up through round number five, it will look like this. Okay, so now see how much better you can actually start to see those ridges. It just gets much more clearer as you are working on it. You know, here's, here's this one, you're starting to see it, but when it's taller, you can just really start to see, it's just a lot more obvious where you're gonna put your stitches. It just gets easier. So just don't get discouraged at the beginning, really. You know, you just have to get through a couple of rows and then it really does get easier. So then after you have re um, gone through round number five, round number six here is just a repeat of round number two. You're just gonna repeat this section over and over. So it's a four round repeat. So one of them is the cable crossing round and then three more rounds are just working even. Okay, so here we are in a cable crossing round. So we start with the extended single crochet, front post double crochet, extended single crochet, and now we've gotten to our cable section. So yarn over twice. You can see that you're skipping over these two posts, skipping over that extended single crochet. And then you're gonna work two front post treble crochets, one there and one here. And then you're gonna go behind your work and make an extended single crochet right in the middle there. 
and yarn over twice and make a front post treble crochet into each of those post stitches that we skipped. One and two. All right, and I'll do the next stitch because that's an extended single crochet over here. I'll do two more stitches actually, and that'll help kind of pull it into place a little better, and then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so you can see it twisted again. There's another twist in our cable. That's how you create those twists, just from switching the order that you work the posts in. That's all it is. So, you know, cables are not as tricky as they seem. All right, so you're just gonna continue working in that stitch pattern until you your piece looks like this. You will have five completed, you know, like there's gonna be six twists here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. You're ending with a twisted round. Let's see, let me find this round for you and tell you what, it's right before we start making the heel. Well, let's see here. Okay, so that would be, it would be a repeat of round two that we end with, and we end with round, that would be round 22 here. So round 23, this is where we start, where we make an opening for the heel. Okay, so if you've never made a, this kind of sock before, this, this might be a little eye-opening because this is actually how I make a lot of the, you know, socks that go on human feet. <laughs> um, not all socks are made in the same way, of course. I make them all kinds of different ways, but this is one of my favorite ways to do it. Okay, so this is the beginning of our round right here. I'm going to put a stitch marker right there. This is the beginning of our round. So in round number 23, we're going to do our extended single crochet, front post extended single crochet. We're going to work through the first set of the cables here and then somewhere in the second set that's where we're going to chain a bunch and skip a bunch of stitches. Okay so the beginning is just like how we've been working. So we're going to ex extended single crochet here, put my stitch mark back in, front post double crochet here, extended single crochet next, and then we have a bunch of front post double crochets here, just like that. Extended single crochet here, front post double crochet, front post double crochet. And then let's see, so we've only done one. One of the cable repeats, we're gonna go to the second one work through that. We have a front post double crochet, extended single crochet, two front post double crochets, one and two, extended single crochet here, and front post double crochet here and here. All right, and then in this um, in this cable repeat, we're going to, well actually, we're going to do one more extended single crochet. So that would start that repeat one more time. And then we're going to chain 17. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and then we're going to skip seventeen stitches. So what we're really doing is we're skipping two whole cable repeats, and then we're going to make an extended single crochet right here, right before the next cable repeat. So that's where we continue with our, you know, picking up our stitch pattern where we left off. So that was an extended single crochet, front post double crochet, front post double crochet, extended single crochet, and so on. So we're going to just continue working in the stitch pattern that we've already set up. And now you can see what is this all about? There's just a big hole here. So this is going to create the opening for the heel. And as we continue working on the sack, we're going to keep continue working around and around. When we get to this chain on the next round, you're just going to work into these into these stitches. So you'll insert your hook underneath the top two loops, like how we normally do, not how I usually do when I'm working into a chain, but underneath those top two loops, as you make the stitches that go all the way across, this will be the back underside of the heel. This will go under, well, under your imaginary foot if you were actually wearing this uh, Christmas stocking. And you're just gonna continue in the stitch pattern. Um, all the directions are spelled out for you in here. And you're gonna get a piece that looks like this. See how we just, started working across that chain. We just continued in the stitch pattern. And then after, um, let's see, at the very beginning of the toe section, 
you work one round of extended single crochet, which is already shown here. So you can see it kind of flattens out. There's no more cabling at this point. And then you're going to continue working in the round. So um, on the very first uh, decrease round, you're going to place some extra stitch markers. So this is, this is the first stitch of the round. So I'm going to put, uh, let's do an orange stitch marker in that one. And then as you work, as you work around, let's see, extended single crochet into each of the next 11 stitches, and then we work a decrease. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11. It should bring you right around to the side of your sock. Then you're going to do an extended single crochet decrease. And I like to do that by inserting my hook underneath the front loop of the next stitch and then under both loops of the following stitch. Then I yarn over, bring that through both of those stitches. Then I yarn over, pull through one and yarn over, pull through two. And I'll show you that again in just a second. The next stitch is just a regular extended single crochet, which would be right here, and we're going to mark that stitch. This is going to be regular single crochets all the way up to the toe, and on each side of that is going to be a decrease. So here's our next decrease. Okay, so insert under the front loop, insert under two loops of the next stitch, yarn over, bring it through, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. And then we would work extended single crochets all the way around to the other side of the sock and then we're going to place another stitch marker between two decreases. So I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here because I want to make sure that I get a chance to show you um, how to put the name on everything at the very end. Um, but as you work around you're just going to be working extended single crochets. You're going to be placing another stitch marker on this side in between your two decreases. So it'll say extended single crochet two together. There will be a stitch right after that, just, just a regular extended single crochet, and then another decrease, which is an extended single crochet, two together. So the stitch in between gets a stitch marker, and that way you can keep track of that stitch and do decreases on either side of your marker as you work your way up. But all of this is written out in your directions. You'll know what to do as you follow those along. The stitch markers are the, just there to help you keep your place and to make sure you don't miss any decreases. All right, so when you start on the heel, you're going to hold your sock with the ankle pointing downward and the heel opening ready to be worked into. And we are going to just work around an extended single crochet here. I'm just going to fasten that off. Um, and you will start at the very side of your heel opening. There is an extended single crochet stitch right here. So there's extended single crochets have two V's, one on top of the other. I'm going to insert my ho hook into the bottom V. And then I'm going to pull up a loop, <coughs> just like this, and chain one just to anchor it. Then I'm going to work an extended single crochet into that same stitch. All right, and that'll be my very first stitch of the round, that extended single crochet. And then I will continue working extended single crochet stitches all the way across. Just like this, until we get to the other corner of the opening here. And, you know, truthfully, you could have started this heel on either corner. It actually doesn't matter. You can start with, um, you know, by working across the, the back of the ankle, which is what I'm doing now, kind of a ba the back of the heel. Or you can start by working across, you know, the bottom of the foot right before the heel starts. It doesn't, it really doesn't make a difference in this pattern. You can do it either way, but I was just, in the pattern I just chose one way to describe it because otherwise I feel like people might get confused and um, sometimes it's just easier to have, you know, a more specific direction in there, even if it's not absolutely necessary. All right, so we've made it to the last stitch. There's the last stitch before the very edge before the very corner. Here's the extended single crochet that sits right at the corner. You can see there's two V's here. So we're going to rotate this sideways and we're going to work into each one of these, these V's. We're just making extended single crochets here all the way around this heel. So there's one and there's two. And then we're going to continue working across the top opening. We're just kind of working in a circle here. 
just like that. So you would be continuing your way around this op the heel opening here. So you would work all of your stitches over to here, and then you're going to place the very last extended single crochet into the top of that extended single crochet that we already worked into the bottom. Remember when we started, we worked into the bottom V of the two V's that comprise the extended single crochet? Well, now we're gonna work into the top of that V. And then you'll have your whole round set up, and as you go around and around, it's just like the, the, the toe where you're doing increases on both sides. This time there is not an extended single crochet between your decreases. Did I say increases? I mean decreases. That's a, <laughs> let me back up. You're doing decreases as you go around and around because you want your heel to get smaller and smaller. Okay, so you'll do a decrease right at the beginning, a decrease right here, a decrease right here, and then a decrease right at the end of your round as you work around. So that's going to create a piece that looks like this. Okay, so you can see all of our decreases from the toe are here, all the decreases from the heel are along there and along there, so it makes it nice and, you know, shaped, basically. We're just kind of creating shaping by making those decreases. All right, and then you can just use your yarn tails at the toe and at the heel to whip stitch these pieces closed. <coughs> So you would just butt your stitches up next to each other, just like this, and then you'll place your needle underneath both loops of each side, and then just create a seam line right here, right through the center of your heel, just like that. You just wanna make sure you're not pulling too tightly on these stitches because it might pucker. Um, you know, you just want them to be butted up but not cinching them close. So you'll just stitch all the way across there and then on the toe you'll flatten it this way and then stitch all the way across your toe. That might seem weird because the toe is actually flattened in this direction, but after you stitch it this way when you block it this little bump goes away and it looks more like a real sock. I just liked how the decreases looked that way. So, All right, and so that completes the sock part. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the adding on the name here. So you're going to put the name on near the bottom edge of your ribbing. So it actually does not make a difference which way, let's see, I think I had you mark one side as the right side. Let me just double check here. Uh, let's see, I think the last row we worked might have been the right side. Okay. Okay, so in the ribbing I have directions to actually seam this closed right away so that we don't get confused. Um, but I left it open because some people might have a larger, um, either a mat or a brush kind of situation for doing their needle felting in. So I wanted to show you, you could do it open and then seam it closed um, either way. So you can go ahead and follow the directions and crochet it closed and then slip this over a mat or a brush um, and you'll see in a minute if you've never done needle felting before, but you need to have something behind your work so that you're not breaking the needle off into the table. <laughs> um, but you can either leave it open or you can close it up. Doesn't make a difference. But when you, when you do your last row, you're going to place these edges together and then your slip stitch seam, let's see, that'll be yarn over and pull through the thickness. Okay, turn ribbing so slip stitch seam is on the inside. Okay, so, so that would mean that would be on the inside and this would be the right side. Okay, so the right side of your ribbing will be the side opposite your last row that you work. So that, the, the, that is the side you wanna put the name on. So I'm gonna place it right in the middle and that will mean that the seam in my ribbing will be right on the back of the stocking. But if you want your stocking to be kind of reversible, um, you know, if you're gonna put something on both sides, you could make the seam be along the, the side edge. So meaning, over here, you could place it over here or over here. I'm placing the seam here, so I'm gonna kind of center the name right in the middle of this piece, but I want it to be pretty close to the bottom edge here because this is gonna be folded like this, okay? So just keep that in mind when you're placing the name. You may even wanna put some little pins in there to remind you um, kind of what your parameters are for how big the name can get. I am going to I'll choose this color. Actually, I'll do it in this color so it matches. But all you need to do is you just need to draw something out as you're doing, like if you're 
um, writing in cursive, let's say we're going to write, we'll make, it, we'll make it short because I don't have too much time left before the end um, of our session here. So we're going to write the name Al. So all you need to do is you just kind of place it where you think it needs to go. You're just drawing with yarn is really all you're doing. And you're using this needle felting tool to stab into the layer behind. You're going through both layers and you want to, if you have a brush like I have, you have to go straight up and down. You can't go at an angle or you're going to break off your needles. They're, they're very sharp and they will break. Um, if you get a wool, you can get a, like a wool pad to needle felt into. That's actually my favorite um, because it doesn't matter if you go at an angle then. So I just do some preliminary, like just a couple little pokes here and there to get the yarn to stay in place. So I'm going to write an L here. That's my capital A. And here is my L. You're just kind of getting them to stay in place until you have written out the name. And if you like where it's at, then you can continue and really felt it in. Right now, if I wanted to, I could remove this. It sticks a little, but see, I could take it off. So that way you can kind of reposition things as you need to, to kind of get everything in the right place. Let's write Alan. So if we had an A coming up here, you know, we just kind of draw it out like as though um, we were drawing right on paper. You can needle felt right on top of the yarn that you have already felted as well. It doesn't have to go next to it. It can go right on top if you need it to. Um, and you may want to find that, you know, you may find that it's, it's better if you do a little practice run just with a pen on a piece of paper and have that next to you. Like really pay attention to how, you know, you want your letters to be. All right, we're not going to have time to get the N in here, but I, I know you guys get the idea. But after you have, if you're happy with the placement, you just kind of go up and down many times until it really starts to felt in place. And you can see that you start to lose the distinction in, within the yarn. You can't see the plies anymore. It just starts to look kind of fuzzier. And you will also see on the back, you'll see that color coming through of the new, the new color there the color that you're adding. And really, the best way to tell if it's felted enough is just use your thumbnail and try to pick it off. And you see, I can't even get that to come up anymore because it's really felted into that, um, that fabric from behind. It really does work well. This is a really fun way to label hats or other things. You want to give it a little bit of personality um, or extra personalization to, uh, to your projects, to your holiday projects. So. That's it. And then after you're done with this, you just go ahead and whip stitch your piece on. You're going to whip stitch the bottom layer onto your stocking like this. Add it onto your stocking. Here we go. You'll just whip stitch it on here, and then you'll fold that over and hang, put the little hang tape on, tape on. There's just like a little hanging loop that you cre um, create with the little slip stitches and some chains, and that's all you need to do to finish up your beautiful holiday stocking. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciated that you guys are here um, and excited to learn about Christmas stockings too. So have some fun making some holiday projects. Bye everybody.